Hey you guys, it's Annie with Salt Town Realty. It is the third Thursday of the month, which means we are going to interview somebody related to home buying, selling, or occupying. And tonight, I'm super excited. I have my handyman extraordinaire. So this, this is Adam Vecinas. He has been my handyman for maybe like five years or something. Maybe and even longer. Maybe even longer. Yeah, yeah, maybe six or seven years. And this is a wildly talented person. And people will only get little snippets. He'll come over and he'll fix a little electrical, fix a little plumbing, fix a little this, fix a little that. And the deeper you get, the more you understand that this guy knows all kinds of crazy stuff. And so I'm super excited to have you on. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a and, pleasure. Um, <laughs> Um, also, Adam is in a home that I own, which I love seeing my light fixture and my <laughs> beam and my cabinets back there. He rents for me as well, and that's just sort of like a happy coincidence. Adam, why don't you give us a little backstory? Like, what? Tell us, tell us your story. How did you come to be a handyman in Salt Lake City? Okay, so I guess it would start when I was about five, <laughs> and uh, and I decided that my well, okay, my mom walked into the living room and saw the television taken apart <laughs> and with Classic. me holding a screwdriver in my hand <laughs> and she screamed and said what are you doing what are you doing and i said well i wanted to play with the cartoons and i figured it's the only way to let them out would be to take the tv apart <laughs> but i can't find them <laughs> so she freaked out and sent me on my way outside and i said okay well what am i going to do now to make her happy so i decided i'll pick some flowers so I went and picked some beautiful flowers, put them in a vase and put them on the counter. And then she came in and said, oh, they're so beautiful. I'm not mad at you anymore. Knock on the door. The neighbor came in and said, I was growing these for the, for the, for the, the fair in a week. And have you seen them? And saw them on the counter. So I said, okay, now mom's really mad at me. So I'm going to do one more thing to help her out. And I decided that I need to learn about plumbing. So I took all of her jewelry and I put it in the toilet and decided to clean it by flushing, <laughs> which I would never do to any of my clients. And it was clean of them. They got most of it back because we had a septic tank. And uh, there you go. So anyway, from there, I then decided, you know, taking things apart and putting them back together again was actually when my dad said, you can't have it back unless you learn how to put it back together again. <laughs> so that included motor deck, uh, lawn mowers with bicycles and trying to make a motorcycle and things like that. So, okay. um, but yeah, then, um, then eventually <laughs> we, let's see, moved to New Jersey from Connecticut. And then um, I worked for a builder and I, my job was to work with all the subs. So building spec homes from the ground up I'd be, you know, learning how to lay block, build uh, all the foundations, all the way up to stick framing, running electrical, and then all the way up to, uh, you know, putting in the lawns. So that's how I got my start learning from old pros in uh, New Jersey. Okay. Then, um, let's see, then I started my own business and moved to Georgia um, with a stop in the Carolinas to build condos. And then uh, my friends in Georgia, came out here for their PhD at the U and they found a house and said, oh, we'd love to have you come out and renovate it. And I said, where are you? They said, we're in Salt Lake City, Utah. I was like, Utah? Why would I want to come to Utah? They said, well, you like to ski. Why don't you come out here and check it out? So I packed up everything, including the turtle, the dogs, <laughs> the fish, and the plants, <laughs> stuck them in a trailer and decided to brave it across Wyoming to uh, in the middle of, the, <laughs> of winter which was a mistake. I learned about crosswinds <laughs> and uh, I made it, you know, made it up and over the passes and into Salt Lake. And then I got stuck in the driveway because they have all these crazy dips and my trailer got stuck. And uh, but that's how I got here. And I never looked back and I've never told anybody to come here how great it is, <laughs> except for my closest friends. Nice. So, yeah, there I, you go. I knew, I knew you'd give a good story for that. And <laughs> Now that we're on it, not to be too tangential, but like you, the people that you moved here with is our like weird backstory connection, right? Remember Absolutely, I had this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because so, people in the physics department that you know yeah. ended up to be you know, potential clients and then didn't even realize until 
they said, oh, well, we know Annie. And, you know, I was like, how do you know Annie? And then they said, oh, well, you know, my husband went to school with Kip. And yeah. Kip and T are the ones that came out here. Right. So it's like I said, it's a small lake city. And thanks to you, I made all these great connections. Yeah. And, anyway, like, I think it's yeah. hilarious that you are like so strangely connected to like different facets of my world. I just, I That's think it's awesome. well, pretty funny. Well, it obviously was meant to be, and, <laughs> you know, I have no regrets. And, yeah, I know. And everybody says, you know, every decision you make in life, you wonder how you get there. And right. it's like, boy, if I hadn't have moved down to the South and I never would have met my friends there and ended up here. And so no regrets at all. And yeah. So, I mean, as much as I was cursing myself, my parents were moving to New Jersey. And I was like, New Jersey? <laughs> it's like, do I, am I going to get an accent? My mother was British. So she's like, of course not. Don't be, don't be daft, you know? And See, I it's like, but I don't want to sound like I'm from New Jersey. Nothing against New Jersey, but. Every single time I talk to you, I learn something new. Like, I didn't know your mom was British, for instance. <laughs> like, where, yeah, every I was time adopted. I hang out with you, I'm like, what? Yeah. And so, so I was adopted and my adopted parents were British and American. Okay. So yeah, okay. that's the connection. Yeah. So um, we're going to address this at the end of this cool. conversation. But uh, years ago, I had Adam, I had this old piano. I got it for free. <laughs> it was in my shed uh, for a long time. And then when I moved to the house that he's in now, I needed it moved there. And I asked Adam and he like, bro, like blood, sweat and tears moved that thing. Because it was about a thousand pounds, probably. Old school. Moved that thing into the yeah. house. And so... But going along the lines of I learned something new, he showed up to the shed and was like, oh, okay, yeah, I can move this. Just like saunters over it and then goes, <laughs> I thought you were just like my handyman. And he also plays the piano as well. We'll address that at the end. But um, yeah, there's always something new that happens. So um, I'm going to ask like, you built homes from the ground up and you've renovated homes. Would you say that there's anything that you specialize in particularly? Um, let's see. What I really enjoy is when someone has a puzzle, you know, when they've, when they've said, you know, like that's how I got started out here was I was out at the Home Depot and Jeremy's in-laws were at the Home Depot and they were talking to the salesman said, hey, we have an old cloth with tub we'd like to convert into a shower. Could we do that? And huh? he's like, no, you really couldn't. And I had just done this back in, uh, you know, back east to a lot of these old, you know, period homes. And so he walked away and I went up to him and said, you know, you really can and they even sell the kits here. So this is what you buy. If you have any problems, give me a call and I can walk you through it. And so they ended up calling me back and said, we really need some help with this. Can you come over to our house in, on Downington and do that? And then that just snowballed into all of their friends. So yeah. I've always liked just puzzles of when people say it can't be done, I try to try to figure out ways it can be done. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I think, I think being able to do different aspects and not just having a separate contractor come in for just electrical, just plumbing, just HVAC, and just tiling and framing, maybe it's nice to have someone to kind of do a little bit of each. Yeah. So that's what I kind of like I, being able to do. You know, I feel like this interview is going to be like me asking you the questions that I said I was going to ask you, but then also like launching into a story about you because I feel like I have so many stories. <laughs> so my classic story about you is when I was living on 9th and 9th. So the first house I ever bought was a triplex on 9th and 9th, built in 1886. So like an old <laughs> place and, you know, three separate apartments. Um, and they're all, they're pretty normal, but like a little quirky the way that Salt Lake can be quirky. And I was living in the top level. And I had this wild dream of like making like a patio and a deck and then it was going to like launch into a whole carport and it was going to have like a spiral staircase. Mm -hmm. And I hired um, an architect friend who's a wildly talented person. This is no cut on this person at all, but he's very creative and artistic and like loves to like see his things come to life. So I hired him. And he had all these different ideas and they were all a little weird and will this work and like all the things. And I spent probably two months working with this guy and I had Adam over for like some other, some other thing, like some little electric, like, oh, I need this little repair or whatever. And he, I think you saw the plans or I don't know what it was. And um, you were like, oh yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. And you looked around and you're like, well, why don't you just put a door there and do it like that? 
And it was like the most simple, easy solution. And I consider myself a pretty clever person who could figure things out. And I hadn't thought of it and the architect hadn't thought of it. And it was like such, and I just was like, I just spent like thousands of dollars <laughs> trying to figure out how to do this thing. And so <laughs> I'm always like, anytime a client has a house that's a little bit funky, I'm like, okay, first step, move into the house, don't do anything. Second step, grab a beer and just sit there and stare at it for a while. Absolutely. Step, yeah. Call Adam, <laughs> give him a beer and have him stare at it. And I guarantee he will come up with like the perfect solution for this thing. Like not an architect, but very like, I feel like you're very literal. Like you just can solve problems and solutions and look at the thing and figure it out. Well, so, thanks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, I think it's uh, I think it's very cool. So, um, okay. Do you have like a, a like your favorite thing? I mean, you kind of just answered this actually. Like your favorite thing to work on is like figuring out, you know, a solution to a problem. But do you have maybe you have a story in particular to that? Um. Um, let's see. Sorry for that, you kind of, you kind of just are always, you're answering like all my questions. <laughs> well, it, it, and so, okay, I mean, just like recently, and, and this again isn't a like bash against anybody, but the, I guess someone had an inspection and they said, oh, well, the hot water heater is not working. So I couldn't tell you if, you know, the hot water's hot and I couldn't get it lit. And so when I went over there and looked at the list and, you know, I just simply turned the dial to pilot and I pressed the button. And I looked in the window and the pilot, you know, stayed lit, but I kept my finger on it and, you know, for a while and I let it go and it stayed on. And I was like, oh, cool. And I turned the knob <laughs> and, and the flame went up and 30 minutes later they had hot water. Yeah. And, and so, the, you know, the husband went over there and he's like, oh my God, this is amazing. How did you do that? And I was like, well, you know, not that I went to eight years of school for this, but, you know, it, it, it's, and he's like, I can't believe the guy told me it didn't work and he was going to make me buy a whole new water heater. And, and I said, well, I'm more than happy to, because it is about 25 years old, but at least you'll have hot water for you and the baby. And, you know, it's, it's going to be, everyone can be safe and feel good. So, I mean, that's just something that I, but is there a particular field that I enjoy? Yeah, like, um, if you were to be, if you had to be like a builder, an electrician or a plumber or anything, like if, if somebody was like, I'll give you $300,000 a year to be yeah. this like thing, mm. is there a, is there one you would choose? I'm now yeah. I'm just going to throw questions at you this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wish I could say yes, there's one particular thing, but it goes such a gamut because I, I enjoy working on vehicles and motorcycles and um, uh, audio video systems, you know, when just to hang a TV for somebody and put a box in the wall yeah. when there's no wires and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe there's no wires, you know, and just simple things like that. I, I think it's just seeing people be happy and think that it's going to cost them a lot of money and showing them that it really doesn't, even if I ask them to help me with it or teach them something about it. I think maybe that's what it'd be. Teaching people how to save money and how to do some of the simple maintenance themselves. Yeah. So they don't always have to call somebody like me to come in, you know, as much as I enjoy, you know, having them call me because I meet new people. I think it's uh, more about just teaching people how things work and, and not to get ripped off. You know, that's the main thing. Yeah, I get these stories all the time. Oh my God, we just got this estimate for ten thousand dollars for a hot water heater, and I was, it's like, well, was it made out of gold or <laughs> what, what? Why is it so expensive? Well, I'm in Park City, and I don't know. Yeah. it's like, well, enough said. Yeah, so, I mean I know, that, that always comes up. And, question. But yeah, I I always feel bad because like you could be charging much more than you charge. I will say that your rates are very, well, and maybe I get special rates. Of course you I, do. I, I and everybody and, and my, you know gets the friends and family discount. And my clients get special exactly. rates. I get that, but I doubt that there's anyone out there that you're gouging. Like, I think you're really, I think you're really kind with your rates because you're a talented person. You can do all the things. You're like a one-stop shop. And um, I just had a contract where uh, and a, or a plumber bid $2,200 for a hot water heater. And I'm like, okay, first of all, I have a plumber, like a certified plumber who will do it for $1,500. And I was like, and second of all, my handyman will do it for like less than that probably, you know? And so I like, 
So I appreciate that you you keep things simple. Maybe you should start like a YouTube channel, like Adams. Yeah. You know. Yeah, maybe. You know, to need to show people how to do things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I thought about that now that because I've never really been on Instagram, and now that I think I'm figuring out how to maybe post videos, yeah. you could do you know with you. Because I've watched some of your videos and I'm like, oh, these are so, these are cute where you're, you know, in a, basically a, a stone wall and you're like, but check out the bones in this, you know, I'm like, well, it's a cemetery. So probably a lot of bones. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and yeah. but you maybe still like, you know, there's no bathrooms, there's no bedroom, <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of potential. Oh, my so. favorite. Yeah, my fake yeah, yeah, yeah. videos. Yeah, but, so yeah. I thought, well, maybe you could do videos just to show people some basic things. Because I've had calls where they can't figure out this electrical problem and it's simply a light bulb. Yeah. You know, just, un, you know, unscrew it, put another one in. Hey, look at that. Wow, oh, that's okay. amazing. Well, I mean, I don't think you need to do videos yeah. that simple. But yeah, yeah, yeah. like some, some troubleshooting videos and things. Maybe we could start an enterprise there together. Of, like, no, I, I know. And you're right. I mean, it's not that simple, but more of like a garbage disposal i get lots of calls oh it's not working yeah. and i try to you know walk them through getting a little wrench and spinning it to get it moving again yeah just make sure it's turned off when you you know right. have your hand on the wrench yeah but stuff like that dishwashers get lots of calls washing machines so yeah a lot of appliances lately it seems like well the so the appliance guys are crazy like i've i've historically had and hopefully he's not watching but i've historically had <laughs> an appliance guy he's i think his business name is the appliance guy or something like mm. that and um man i'll tell you his rates have gone really high to wow. come yeah and he like it's it's expensive to hire uh, an appliance guy like anytime somebody i feel like anytime somebody is specialized in something the prices go up you mm. know like an hvac guy you know needs to change one little fuse or something right. Right. And they're paying for like the company and the insurance and the truck and the part. The time is not, it takes them 30 seconds to put that thing in, right? You know, yeah, it's not yeah. that. They're paying for like the whole thing. So when you call like uh, companies that rhyme with Schmini Mowers, yeah. you know, yeah. like when you call those guys, they're paying for a lot of other stuff. Sure. And so that's what's great about you is like, you know, if you're like, I know it's just this one little part, this one little thing you're not paying for all of like the marketing, the truck, the website, the, all the things that you right. can come and just do. This is just what it is. And mm -hmm. so 99% of the time when I was like a burgeoning homeowner, I would go on YouTube and figure out how to do all these things myself. But I'm like, it's legitimately just for a appliance or a, like a little part in an HVAC or something. It's way easier just to call you. I'm nervous now though that we're doing this and everybody will call you and I'll lose you. <laughs> Don't no, me. you'll never lose me. Yeah. Okay. Plus, okay. you know where I live. Yeah, I know, I know where you live, mister. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, any like funny stories you want to share? You kind of have shared some stories, but um, you, you basically see. answered all my questions really easy. I figured this would be more of a banter interview anyway, so. <laughs> Well, it, um, I mean, when, back in Atlanta, I got a call because there was water dripping from someone's ceiling. So I was able to go over there and knock down the upstairs neighbor's door and um, discovered my first hoarder. And I was like, oh, this is what a hoarder lives like. And the little paths through the rooms, like being in the woods and in a, a wooded path and followed me, followed him to the bathroom. And then I opened up the toilet tank and there's like nothing inside. The water is just flowing and flowing and dripping everywhere. So I decided, well, let me go run and grab the parts. And I came back and I fixed it. <laughs> and while I was fixing it, he decided that would be an opportune time to take off his clothes oh. and, and stroll around the apartment. Yeah. And uh, so the only thing I could think of was to say, wow, your plumbing is really messed up. Not in front of his plumbing, but the toilet plumbing in any way. I fixed it. I, I got the thing on there really fast and I ran out of there. Apparently, I don't know if I said the right thing or the wrong thing, but he decided to go a little berserk and started throwing things through the windows. <laughs> and then the little kids downstairs got scared. So I had to come back there and I had to calm him down and tell him oh that I didn't, you know, intend Wait, to insult him. Huh? Was he still naked? No, no. This time he had, you know, like a towel okay. on. But then 
I get another call because the police were called and I had to get them out there because he was going to barricade himself inside and the police were going to knock the door down. And so because I had to come back with plywood to fix all the windows. And so it's just, I don't know, I, I don't know if that really is a great story, but it was just, you just run into so many different people that have different needs, you know, and you have to be able to say, look, hey, everybody is all the same to me. You know, it doesn't matter all your little differences. It's yeah. like people that need stuff fixed, regardless of whether you have clothes on or not. Yeah. You know, it's it's just, uh, so I don't know, that, that's, that's like one little thing, but nothing really that stood out. There's so many, everybody's got a little bit of a story, you know, yeah. whether it could be so simple and boring or exciting. I think maybe it's about the people that I work for because you've got interesting clients who may be the big wigs in the climbing world and you never know who you're dealing with, you know? And so sometimes they're so mild mannered, but it's like, wow, you just climbed El Capitan, you know, like, you know, with your eyes closed in one hand or something, yeah. you know, really amazing <laughs> people. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, and I think it's a lot about just, you know, meeting the clients and hearing their stories. Yeah. So that's, that's a big thing for me. Yeah. You're a people person. Like, You've got the gift of gab, you're a people person. Like, that's what I've always liked about you is that you you like to connect with people. That's a big part of it. Um, so I love that. And uh, yeah, it actually, I'll, 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 I'll say on this little interview here that like one of my current dreams is to have a podcast that's specifically about weird stories in real estate. Oh, cool. Because you're cool. right. Everybody has weird stories and I've talked to so many agents. There's a guy on my phone that's literally labeled like uh, like quirky guy who found dead body in house, you know, with his name on there, obviously. Yeah, yeah. His name, but like, um, and so like every realtor has some like creepy, weird story that they've dealt with. And so I'm like, mm. I start a podcast to kind of just like have a, uh, you know, be able to tell these stories. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think you're prepped for this, but there's two things about Adam that are very interesting outside of all of the other interesting things mm -hmm. about him. One is that you were a ski racer growing up, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to, I raced a little bit in high school, and then I went on to uh, ski instructor school up in Vermont yeah. and got my certification. Um, I also, while I was in New Jersey, I was a firefighter. And, <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and so, um, yeah, because part of it was the band I played in, the the lead singer was on the first aid squad, um, and our drummer was in the fire department, and so every time we got a call, they had to boogie on out of there to go to the call. And I was like, well, that's not fair. And so I said, well, I might as well join, so now I can go to the calls. So I did that and um, and became a firefighter, not just for the calls, but to, you know, help people. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and so, we went to a couple of different, where we were pulling elderly out of a, a retirement home, and I was on the oh, newspaper, wow. or on the front page, carrying a woman down my, oh on my, my shoulders, that thing. Of course, so, of course you are. The, uh, yeah, so I did that, and, um, and, but, yeah, so skiing, yeah, a huge love when I came out here, and I was like, I can't believe I've never been to Utah to ski. Oh. I thought I was a snob that said I don't need to go anywhere because everything I need is on the East Coast. The skiing in Vermont is so good. Like everybody knows that. It's just like so well, hard pack. When I came out here, I brought my <laughs> 201 racing skis, and the people are like, "What are those?" Exactly. Like, skis. You know, no, no, no. You are like this when he skis. They need these big fat wide things. I said, those are water skis. Well, <laughs> yeah. What do I need those for? No, you'll wait. Wait till we get a power tank. <laughs> yeah. So I learned. Exactly. Her. Yeah. Exactly. So um, I haven't skied with you, but uh, Adam also works at Deer Valley during the winter times, and my guess is that he's like a phenomenal skier. You don't have to answer that. That's just my guess. So one is that he was a ski racer. I just learned that he was a firefighter, and he's also a very good piano player. <laughs> are you prepared to play some piano yeah. for us tonight? I've been sitting here at the piano. So. <laughs> I figured that you were um, set up for it. So let's end our our little interview here with some some. Piano. Well, and thanks to you because you had put your upright piano in this exact same yeah. spot. So I was like, when I came in, I said, this is where I'm going to put my piano. It's right here. So I'm going to keep the vibe because going. Right. Well, yeah. Um, I enjoy the spot and then the great acoustics. So uh, I'll just play a little something and um, um, let me know if this is loud enough.
Can you hear that? Yep. Absolute renaissance man and a gem of a human. <laughs> well, thank thanks. you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, see ya. <laughs>